we modified it a little bit. When you look at the material in the supplies, uh, the way they originally biased it was very, uh, very poor. So we did change the resistance on it. This is the circuit we're actually going to be wiring, but it should be, uh, it should be the right, the one that's in uh, your book. I mean, I'm sorry, in the lab. So this is a common collector, also called an emitter follower, because the output follows the emitter. This has a current gain of slightly, I'm sorry, this has a voltage gain of slightly, uh, slightly less than one, because I'm taking my output off the emitter. Uh, this is a coupling capacitor. We never, ever, 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 ever bypass the emitter resistor on top of the electrode. So this has a really high input resistance. We'll look at this or impedance. It has a really low output impedance, and we'll look at that and uh, see if we can calculate that. But first of all, let's calculate our voltages, guys. So what would VB be? What would VB be? So VB would be equal to 39K over 72K. K cancels each other out. So it'd be 39 divided by 72 uh, times 10. Yeah, that's right. That's what's nice about the voltage divider for me. You're only dealing with two resistors. Most of the time you can do RT in your head. You don't have to pick up a calculator. So what do we got for VB? What's that? 5.4 volts. And then we're through with that. DE would be equal to uh, 5.4 minus 0.7. So what do we got? What's that? 4.7. Now notice the collector is connected directly to power. There's no collector resistance. So when the transistor turns on, the output voltage is going to go up. When the transistor turns off, the output voltage is going to go down. So the output is going to be in phase with the input. So now I can calculate IE. Uh, IE would be equal to 4.7 divided by 1K. So I can do that in my head. It's 4.7 milliamps, right? AV would be equal to approximately 1 because my input does this, my output's going to do that, right? You understand? And the 7 tenths of a volt has already been took, it's already been taken out. We took the 7 tenths of uh, the volt out when we biased it, so that's not going to come out of our output signal. What's going to come out of our output signal is RE prime. So what else do we need to calculate? So this is a 3904. Uh, the typical beta on a 3904 is 100, and it's really good too. I know it says it's anywhere between 30 and 300, but typically it's 100. So my input impedance, uh, Rn, I think is what they call it, would be equal to 1 over 1 over 33K plus 1 over 39K plus 1 over 100K. Now what we do here is we multiply this guy times beta. So we're going to take 100 times 1K and that's where the 100K comes from. So what's my input impedance? Gonna be less than 33. Where that thing's coming in between the red and white. It's not on my screen. Which that's okay.
So what do we got for REN? I got 50, no, it can't be 1.7, Cody. That's way, way low. Look at all the size of these resistors up here. I know it comes with this guy, but it's not going to be that much. Look at all these sizes up here. If I had, uh, if I had two 33Ks, we could ignore these for a second. If I had two 33Ks, that would be 15K right there. Right, you understand? Well, there's no way in the world it could do that. So sometimes you can tell if you're uh, really wrong. <laughs> What we got? Huh? One fifty? About fifteen point two is what I got. Right. Is that what y'all got? By the way, what's nice about having resistors this side, there's a little some shortcuts. You know, all these are big resistors, and all of them's K. So what I do is I just don't use, I, I know my answer is going to be in K. If I know my answer is going to be in K, then I don't put K in my formula. So I enter 33 reciprocal, 39 reciprocal, 100 reciprocal, and then I came up and came up and got 15, 15.2. Uh, and, of course, I know my answer is going to be in Y. Uh, my R out. Does it ask for R out is going to be equal to these two guys out here in parallel, 1 over 1 over 1K plus 1 over 1K, so that's going to be 500 ohms. We know that. Uh, what else do we need to calculate? And all our charts. I don't have a copy of the lab. Huh? I'm everywhere. I'm just solving while I'm thinking about it. Okay, so VCE, how do I solve for VCE? If the formula gives it to you, voltage collector to meter. Uh, so RN is equal to 15.2K, uh, R out is equal to uh, 500 ohms. These are all calculated. Uh, VCE would be equal to VC which is equal to 10, because there's a straight piece of wire, right? You understand. Minus the voltage on the emitter, which is 4.7. So what's VCE going to be? 5.3. Okay, so what else do we need? Huh? Power gain. Well, let's look at this. Uh, so let's say I'm coming in and I'm going to say, okay, my IN would be equal to one volt peak peak divided by 15.2K. Does it, do I give you a power gain formula? Seems like it's pretty straightforward. That's not floating around in my head for some reason. But does it give you formula for current gain? V in Zn over Z, there we go, and we could did all we could do all the math. But there's there's the formula, so we could do all the math. That's that's the easy way. So Zn we got Zn is equal to 15k 
Uh, Z out is equal to 500 ohms. Woo. So what's our current gain? Thirty. And what's that unit? What, what unit is that? It's no unit. It's a gain. It's a multiplier. Uh, so that means my power gain. So what would the, my power gain be? So my power gain says it's this guy right here. My current gain times my voltage gain. My voltage gain is 1, so what's the power gain going to be? 30. That's what's nice about the common collector. Once you got your current gain, you got your, you got your power gain. So that means if I, get one, if I put 1 milliwatt in, I should get 30 milliwatts out, right? We got a pretty high output impedance on here, but... Now, normally this guy we don't use very high. What's what's your what's the uh, what's the uh, impedance of your car speakers? Anybody know? What's the impedance of car speakers? I don't know the impedance of car speakers. Close. Yeah, four on two to four on. So if I was to put a couple four on resistors out there, that would really give us a high current. Day. But this is lab, so I think, is that everything? We got everything in our chart that's required. Yes or no? Uh, our function generator won't go down to one volt. So, but this guy here, we can put tons of volts into this. We can put uh, five, if we got it biased in the center, we can put about five volts peak peak. We can put about 10 volts peak peak in here. A little less, probably about nine volts peak peak. This calls for one boat, but we're going to put a little more in there so we can see it a little better. Okay, so first of all, let's check our bias. Is that everything? Except for making, now we're down to measurements, right? So here's my circuit. So here's my transistor. This is a... a 2N3904, which is a uh, NPN transistor. Uh, this one, the emitter is on the left, and the base is in the center, and the collector is on the right. Uh, here's my two transistors, I mean my resistors. Here's the 39K. This is hooked up to the base. Can y'all see it on the base? So here's the center right here. So this is the base. And it's going to ground. I'm using this bus right here for ground. And then here's my 33K, and it's going up to power. So there's my power right here. So there's my base circuit. Uh, my collector runs directly from power. See, it's hooked directly to power. Now my emitter, which is on the left, uh, here's my emitter resistor. This is my 1K emitter resistor right here. So it's going between the emitter and common. This this power supply uses the common, it doesn't use the ground. Here's my output capacitor. It's hooked up to the collector also. And then it goes over here. Here's that 1K resistor. Here's my load, here's my actual load, and it's also hooked to the common. Uh, so there's my circuit. So when I measure to the base, and for some reason, people think they got to get on the base. Uh, all I have to do is just touch this resistor right here, right? You understand? Uh, this is this will be the collector. This will be the base. And uh, is that the only voltage we need to measure? Right. So here's my. Uh, I'll turn my camera around. Let me turn my meter back on. So what's our VB? What what VB should we expect? Oh, wrong wrong. Let me escape out of this. Let me go to my other camera. And then I'll make this full screen. 
Okay, so here's my base. We what are we supposed to measure on the base? Five point four. It's measuring four point seven, so it's about seven hundred millivolts low. Now, why would it be low? Well, when we calculate with our resistors, we use their color code value. We don't measure them, right? You understand that? Because we understand now why our measurements might be a little off. Yeah, this is DB. Yeah, so you can see I'm I'm right here on right on this resistor right here. That's DB. <coughs> Here's D, E. It's 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 four point four point eight volts. And of course, it's low because D B was low, right? It's close, but you, huh? Yeah. Oh, I'm on the wrong resistor. Here's, here's Big B. <laughs> Sorry. We should expect it to be seven tenths of a volt, right? I was on the other base resistor. I was on the 39K. Yeah, this is D E. This is D B. D E should be seven tenths of a volt less positive. So it should measure four. 0.07 or 4.1. So this is 4.8. We're rounding everything to one decimal point, right? So this would be four votes. Okay, anything else we need to measure? Collector to emitter. Of course, we could use Kirchhoff's law to calculate that. So what what would that be? So here's my collector voltage. It's 10 volts. What's on my emitter? So we're going to measure that by, I'm not going to move my ground. We're going to measure that by math. So we know what our emitter voltage is. What's our emitter voltage? What's that? Four. What's my collector voltage? Ten. So what's my voltage collector to emitter? Six volts. Are we through with our measurements? Is that all our measurements? Have we made all our static measurements? By the way, I've got an AC signal on this, and that's what's so per that's so be what's so beautiful about it is when you put an AC signal. That AC, that the average of the average DC value of an AC signal is zero, so it averages it right down the center, right? So you can measure your bias in, a, in an amplifier circuit, even if the amplifier is, is operational. Yeah, but we're not going to put one volt peak to peak in it because our, 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 our generator won't put one volt peak to peak. I thought I had the lab up there, guys, but undoubtedly I closed it out. And this, yeah, this one is not in your book. I don't know why they left it out of this lab. This is off the last, this, this came out of the last book. The last lab book before they upgraded. When they upgraded, they left the common collector out for some reason, even though it's one of the most popular amplifiers out there. So our math formula calculating R in and R out is a little easier than what they try to use in it. I don't know. R R in is the same. AV is a little different because AV is going to be equal to about one. Compute the AC parameters. So 
So we're going to put uh, let's we're going to put two bowls feet thick in there because we can't. Let me see what we can get. Tell you the truth. Uh, the best we can do is two bowls. So we're going to put two bowls feet thick in there. So let's mark out the one bolt and put two bolts there. And then VE, what's VE going to be? What do we expect it's going to be? What's that? Oh, you're, now this is little e. This is not big e. This is little e. This is AC. This guy here has a voltage gain of about one. So what does that mean? If I put two millivolts in on the collect on the base, we're taking our output off the emitter. I'm gonna get two millivolts on the output of the emitter, right? I'm sorry, two volts. RE prime, how do we calculate? We're gonna have to calculate RE prime, but we can't measure it. How do we calculate RE prime? So we didn't calculate RE prime back over here when we was doing our math. So RE prime is equal to 25 millivolts over IE. What do we get for IE? Uh, 4.7 milli. So RE prime should be about what? And this is dynamic. This is an AC resistance. We can't measure this. We can't measure it. What's that? 5.3 ohms. RN. We've already calculated RN. What's RN going to be? 15.2k in AV we've already computed a that is what AP we've already computed AP what's our computer power gain 30 are we okay huh RE, we just calculate five point. We, I don't call it RE because it get I, you get so confused with RE uppercase and RE lowercase. So I call this RE prime with a little asterisk, a little apostrophe up there. If you see when I calculated it, I put the little apostrophe up there. And y'all know why I'm, I learned to do that because both of them's called RE. It's just that one of them's. A, one of them's an AC resistance, one of them's a DC resistance. So in here, when we use lowercase letters, we're dealing with AC. When we use uppercase letters on, on, the, on the subscript, we're talking about uh, AC. So that's why I call this RE prime. So that's the way I learned it. Uh, but, he, but whoever did this book uh, just calls it lowercase uh, RE. Yeah, I'll, I didn't give you all the sheet on how that how they came up with that, right? It takes a lot of calculus. So believe me, 25 millivolts over uh, over IE is close enough for Matt, for our. Uh, what's that? B. This guy here has a voltage gain of one. We're taking our output off the emitter. That's where the that's why it's called emitter follower because the the output follows whatever the, the emitter follows whatever you put on the base. So if I put two volts peak to peak on the base, then I'm gonna be I'm gonna I'm gonna compute that I'm gonna get two volts peak to peak on the emitter, right? You understand? So we don't get any voltage gain out of this guy. None. 
we put our outlet is a common it's a, so when I when I figure out what's common, I look and see what we where what's our input applied to? What's our input applied to? Which league is our input applied to? Okay, what where do we get our output from? The emitter. So the so the collector's common. And you say, well, I got a power supply connected to the collector. But what you got to understand is an AC signal sees a DC source as zero. It sees it as ground. It passed that AC signal will pass through that DC source. So here's my here's my here's my input right here's. So when this signal right here changes, it sees that. So your AC sees that as ground, right? You understand that. Which is really neat because the battery, the power supply is connected. So what did we do? We hooked up, a, we hooked it up on an electronic workbench, and it blew the fuse because it saw it as a short circuit. And now why I want this to blow the fuse is because of that one k ohm resistor right there. So yeah, if you shorted this thing out, it would burn your transistor up. Okay, is that everything? Okay, so we're using a little different. We're using two volt, two volt speak speed. So I'll shift over to the actual signal itself. So here's my scope. Now, what I've what I've done is I've overlaid these things. And what I want you to notice, so the yellow one is my input, and my blue one is my output. And I want you to notice that the output is slightly less than the input. So when we say it has a gain of one, it don't. It has a gain of almost one. Now why? Can somebody get? Because the input sees already primed. So we lose, the input goes to RE prime, that little 5.3 ohm resistor, I lose something. Well, that's why the output is slightly less, because the input flows through RE prime to get to the output, right? You understand that? So that little old voltage drop across RE prime right there, that little 5.3 ohm resistor, causes the output to be slightly less. So when we say this thing has a gain of 1, that is not true. It has an approximate gain of 1. But for all practical purposes, look at the difference. Y'all see the difference? That little that, that guy right there. That's the only difference between the input and output. So just for compute cal calculations and everything, if we say it's got a gain of one, that's fine, even though it's slightly less. So yeah, I'm putting two volt peak peak in, the yellow one, and I'm getting... What would that be? Two volts peak peak. This is 500 millivolts per division. Uh, so that'd be 100, 200, 300, that'd be uh, 900 millivolts. 1.9 volts out, two volts in. Okay, guys, what do we need to know from this guy? So we're measuring a voltage gain of plus 1.9. So I'm getting 1.9 out and 2 volts in, so what's my measured voltage? <coughs> out over in. 1.9, 1.9 divided by 2. Uh, so we got a bunch, we got a voltage gain of 0.95. And by the way, we don't use engineering notation on gains. What else do we need to know? RN, we need to measure RN. We calculated RV. We computed one. We got not 0.95, right? You understand. Uh, DB, voltage on the base, voltage on the emitter. 
So voltage on the base, we're putting two volts peak to peak. We measured that. That's our measured value. Uh, voltage on the emitter, we're getting a 1.9 volts, right? Understand that's our measured value. Uh, AV, we calculate, we met, we can't measure AV. It's got to be computed. It says measure. Well, I'm not, that's not true because when we, when we calculated our AV, we used two, we used two measured values, right? You understand? So we need to measure RN. How do we measure RN? How are we doing on time? That's a little bit. What we're going to do is we're going to put a 10K pod in series with it. Oh, we're getting some positive feedback. We're going into oscillation. So y'all see how I oscillate? Huh? I'm oh, sorry. Somehow we're getting positive feedback for oscillation. We got all this wire out here. But that's okay. So what we got two volts out, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave my two volts out, and I'm gonna adjust this to it drops down to one volt peak two. And I'm not gonna be able to do that. Who are you saying? Uh, our, our calculated input impedance is going to be way off. So what did we calculate? Calculate 15K. And it's actually, it's not too bad. We're going to be 5K off. I turned the pot all the way up. So what we did is we you did a little trick for y'all that messed out on a common emitter. Is that what we did is we set our output voltage. And this is a really neat little trick when I first. So if I come over here, and this is a pot right here. This right here, I have no idea what it is. And I have 10 volts adjusted right there. If I set that to zero, of course, I get 10 volts out. If I start adjusting this so it drops down to five volts, what do I know about these two things? Huh? Uh, they're equal. So what we did is we started out with a, a two volt peak to peak output. And what I've done is I put a pot wired as a rheostat in series with my input. So I'm putting two volts over here. And what I did is I, I, I started adjusting that until my output dropped down to one volt. So when my output dropped down to one volt, I put two volts in, then what that means is, is this resistor and, and Zn have to be equal to each other. So what I can do now is I can measure my the what I have my pot set at, and that'll give me my input resistance. And I know what it is because I turned it all the way up. So let's see what it actually is. So here's my pot. I put it in series if I can get it into my camera shot. And I put my input signal here and I turned it until it dropped down to one half. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put my meter on on. And it's a 10K pod. So we got lucky on that one. And then I'm going to measure the resistance and see what it is. So it's measuring 9.3K. So that's our input. That's our measured input resistance. 
Calculated 15, we're getting half of what we calculated. So I should have had to get a 100K pot. So is that everything? Huh? I'm listening. A what? AP? So how would you think we would calculate AP? How do we compute AP? Huh? Huh? Just go ahead and mark that one out. I'm not going to worry about that. We could compute it, but it's okay. So we're not going to have time for the troubleshooting, but let's go ahead and talk about it. Uh, what would happen if R1 of What's going to happen if R1 of Okay, so the transistor would cut off. Uh, what happens if R2 opens? If R2 opens, uh, R2 is setting the base voltage. If R2 opens, then this guy over here is going to set the base voltage. The transistor sees this as 100K. That means the base voltage is going to go way up to the transistor inside the voltage. That's about all you can know. do. We see that uh, transistor goes out, or it's going to cut off. Transistor shorts, unless you enter. Uh, I don't think they're going to ask you the voltage. So, y'all need to remember, y'all supposed to owe me a bunch of laps tonight, right? Well, I gave y'all all of them, so y'all need to turn all of them back in if y'all were here. Huh? They're over there. I gave them out last class. No, you're not going to get them now. You missed last class. Oh, okay. So I need to give you those labs now. Give them to me now. That's it. Huh? Yeah, y'all should have, most of them y'all did okay. All the, all the handout labs were pretty straightforward because there was no questions on them. So, uh, if you did those, you pretty much got 100 on those. If you didn't do them, you didn't get anything on them. You know. So, what we're going to do Monday, I mean, I'm sorry, Tuesday, is we're going to have the final exam at the start of class. You have two hours to take the final exam. And if you want to work on lab until 9 o'clock, you need to do that, you can. And that's it. Okay? This lab is due when? Tuesday. Tuesday. Huh? I want all the others back now. So I can enter all those grades. I need to enter all those grades. What? I want all the I want all the labs I gave y'all. I want all your labs back. There is no labs entered in. So if you want, huh? What do you mean? No, you got to turn those in. These are these are thirty-four. You can turn in Tuesday. 
because I gave the first, I gave the two people that was absent, I'm going to let give them an opportunity to be heard. Both of you, you have Yeah, we had two people that was absent when we did it in class. But you're going to have to wait until Friday Friday afternoon to do 34, right? So y'all can hold on to 34. I, I understand what you're saying now. I got confused. Rich gets confused every little bit. I kept the I kept the checkups. Yeah, the checkups. If you looked at the procedure, the checkups don't. The checkups get turned in by themselves. Well, that's the only thing that was on there was checkup. Some of y'all didn't do turn turn in the the checkups are not with the questions. Some of y'all didn't turn in the questions. Huh? I'm not even saying it was you. What I did on the back of your lab, if I said there was no questions attached, and that means there was no questions attached. Well, then there's missing pages then. No, no, I'd have to show you the lab book. If it says there was missing pages, they were missing pages. There's usually five or six questions after every after every lab, after the end of every lab. And then the checkup is totally different. I mean, it's something different. It's, there's no questions on the checkup. Some of y'all didn't turn in questions. So I don't know what happened to this in pages, but I mean they're they're missing. They were missing when I started grading them. Uh, no, they're over there in the middle. Thank you. 